Hello and welcome to chapter 5. In this chapter we're covering everything related to user interface and menus. In this first part we'll start building our heads up display for our character, showing their lives and the number of keys they've collected. So to begin off with this we're going to start off with importing in the assets that are found inside the project folder that you've been provided. So I'm going to create a new folder in my content browser. Of course one UI. In here I'm going to add another folder for my textures. Inside this folder I'm going to click import and I'm going to choose my three textures. My empty heart, my full heart and my skull. Import those in to see them appear like so. Textures are identified by the red underline. So I'm going to make this folder red. Like so. With these three textures, I can create the HUD. So let's start off by creating the look of this HUD. And this will be used, uh, uh, created sorry, using a widget blueprint. So go to add new, user interface, which is at the bottom of our list. And we'll choose widget blueprint. We're going to name this one heads up display. Open it up and you'll be presented with the widget editor. The widget editor is how we design user interface elements. So in the center we have the viewport which shows us what the design of our widget will look like. On the left hand side we have the palette and the palette is all the components that we can use to build our widget. Below that we have the hierarchy and that's how we organize and arrange our widget. On the right hand side we have a familiar looking details panel. That details panel will change based on what we've got currently selected. So if I choose my canvas panel, I'll see the settings available for that canvas panel. And at the bottom, you'll see animations. We're not covering animations in this series, but if you want to learn that more, you can find uh, videos on my channel on YouTube related to it. This is the design view. There's also a graph view, which you can switch to in the top right. In the graph view, this is how you would program functionality into your widget. We'll be coming to back to this in part two. For now, let's return to the designer view. So we're going to create the design for our uh, user interface now for our heads up display. And we're going to have to use the... Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to start off by creating our heads up display. And we'll be using our canvas panel here that we've been given by default. A canvas panel is a container that you can contain other widget elements and it can contain it in absolute positioning meaning that we can place any element inside of it wherever we like so we're going to start off with our vertical box so in your palette you're going to search for the word vertical to find the vertical box click and drag it onto your hierarchy on top of your canvas panel that will place it inside of our canvas panel which you can see here with it selected, I can see the anchor for it, which is this icon here, and I can move it freely wherever I like. So I'm going to move it just in a little bit from the top left corner. Now its anchor is important. The anchor is how it determines where it should be placed in relative lo location to its anchor. So for example, if I'm in my top left, I want the anchor to also be in the top left. If it's going to be in the top right, I would switch the anchor to the top right. I'm going over to the anchors section on my details panel and choosing the top right. However, I want mine to be in the top left, so I'm going to switch it back and reposition it in the top left hand corner. And so a vertical box. <clears throat> so a vertical box takes its contents and stacks them uh, vertically. So we're going to be having two sections to this. We have the hearts at the top. And below that we'll have the number of skulls. Let's start with the hearts. For the hearts we'll need a horizontal box. Click and drag this into your vertical box. Now the horizontal box does what you th uh, it does. <coughs> so the horizontal box does what you think it would do. Uh, if mm -hmm. 
So the horizontal box takes the contents of it and stacks it horizontally, much like the vertical box does it vertically. So in the horizontal box, we're going to have the series of hearts indicating the player's life. So there will be images. So drag one image into your horizontal box. Click on that image to see its details. And on the right hand side, change its first image here to our heart full. That's a bit big, so I'm going to resize it to 128 by 128. Perfect. Now I want three of these, so I'm going to duplicate this image by doing Control W. And as you can see, because they are in a horizontal box, they are stacked horizontally. Next, we'll create another horizontal box inside our vertical box. So I'm going to just going to minimize that and drag another horizontal box into my vertical. Click and drag into vertical box. This horizontal box is going to store the number of uh, skulls we've collected. So that first of all will be an image. So drag image into a horizontal box. Select the image and choose the skull image. Again, we're going to resize this to 128 by 128. Next to that, we're going to have two texts. Find your text, drag it into a horizontal box, and then drag another one in. Now we'll need two because one of them is going to be static and the other one's going to be dynamic, meaning that value is going to change. If you click on the first one, <coughs> we're going to change the, if you click on the first one, we're going to change the, if you click on the first one, we're going to change its content text to the letter X. Below that, we'll see appearance, and I'm gonna change the size of this to say 48. We're then gonna to scroll to the top and determine how it sits inside the horizontal box. I'm gonna change its vertical alignment to the center. And now you can see it appearing like so. I'm gonna click on the second text block, and I'm gonna change the text to zero. Again, vertical align in the center and change its size to 48. Now, if I want to pad out between these two, I can click on the second horizontal box, the one with the skull in it, and look at the padding. If the padding isn't showing left, top, right, bottom, you can expand open by clicking on the little arrow key. We want to change its top padding. So change it to say 40, and it'll put a padding uh, of space between the hearts and the skull. And I like what we've got here. Now for future reference, we'll need to change a couple of things in the details panels. Namely the things that could be changing in the game. First of all, we're gonna change this text. So click on the second text value in the second horizontal box. And we're gonna to go to the right hand side details panel and we're gonna name it. We're gonna name it, name it number of keys. And then we want to tick the is variable box. We want to tick that because that value is going to be changing throughout the game. Next, we want to change the horizontal box of the first one. Now, these hearts are going to change their values. But ultimately, what you're doing is changing the children and what they are inside the horizontal box. So we need to make the horizontal box a variable. So we're going to name it health box and tick the is verbal button. Click compile and we're done here. So you can close this. Now we're going to have to get it added to the actual screen. That's just designing it. To get it to show onto your screen, we're going to go into our game mode. So go find your game mode in your game settings folder and open it up. Well, if you've ever presented with this screen, you can open the full blueprint editor by clicking on the link here. In here, we're going to do a begin play event. So as soon as this game mode starts the game, we're going to create a widget. And the widget we're creating is our heads up display that we just designed. We then want to store this as a, a variable, as a reference for later use. So promote that to a variable, naming it 
heads up display. So the create widget creates it in memory. This is storing it and saving it for future reference. And now we have to actually tell it to render it to the screen. So drag out from the return value again, and we want to add to viewport. Click compile and close. Now you want to make sure that your game is using your game mode. So double check that in your top, in your world settings to the right. If your world settings tab isn't showing, you can activate it through the window menu at the top here. In your world settings, you'll see game mode options. Make sure your maze game mode is the one that is selected. If it's not, change it so it is. So now when we push play, our HUD is now showing in the top left hand corner. Notice though, nothing is changing as we play the game. So we need to do that in the second part. So join us in part two, where we start adding functionality to our heads up display. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you like what I do and you want to see more content before anyone else, please consider supporting me for at least a dollar over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. For just a dollar, you can get access to all these videos early before anyone else, sometimes well ahead of anyone else. And I'll take this moment to say a big thank you for all my supporters so far in supporting me in making this channel content. Wouldn't be doing this without you guys, so a big thank you to all of you. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.